Hey class, welcome to Critical Thinking, English 300. Um, so in this class will be a lot of um, activities that will strengthen and exercise your critical thinking skills. So you may be thinking, what exactly is critical thinking? We think all the time and we uh, use our brains all the time. But what exactly is critical thinking? So critical thinking answers the questions of why and how and um, using information in specific contexts and case studies using background information and historical context you take all of that together to create arguments and um, critical answers to questions so in this class you learn to um, you learn to argue craft arguments and actually answer questions of why also it will strengthen your writing skills so a big issue in critical thinking and for chapter one in your book is the first amendment right in america so the first amendment of the constitution allows you your freedom of speech However, there are many um, exceptions, defenses, and actually um, the First Amendment is one of the most um, actively muddled and also contested and controversial amendments. For example, while you are allowed to speak your mind and to have freedom of thought from the government. You cannot cr create a situation of danger using freedom of speech. For example, there's the common and uh, commonly used notion of yelling fire in a movie theater. So while you do have the freedom to express yourself, doing so will cause a lot of chaos, commotion, harm, and unnecessary, um, unnecessary chaos and disorder. So you cannot use your freedom of speech and expression to create such, such situations. Um, however, that's where it gets muddy because in some situations people can argue that in fact they were not creating a disorderly situation but perhaps they were confused and thought there might be a fire. So it's a highly contested and controversial amendment but strictly speaking uh, it's used uh, to protect yourself from the government. Also, students, in, in, in this uh, week's activity, you have to talk about issues of student rights. So students often have what's called truncated rights. So truncated rights are actually rights that are given to minors as well as people um, in a school-like environment. So you do not have the full privilege rights that may entail or be given to a citizen or um, a pedestrian, um, an adult pedestrian out on the street. Uh, students need to be um, protected. So um, tr the, the concept of truncated rights in schools is also highly controversial and um, contested. So students often simply cannot cannot express themselves as they would. It, and that goes in terms of speech, rhetoric, but also clothes, how they dress, the issue of school uniforms, and whether that is a violation of freedom of speech and expression is very common. But as students, you must dress in your uniform and it doesn't really matter how you want to express yourself so that's a form of truncated rights often found in schools so that's this first lesson 
Um, and I'll see you next week for week two.